Earth. The blue jewel of the universe is our home. Our very existence depends on a thin, fragile collection of gases, which we call atmosphere. We ask much of our atmosphere, perhaps too much. If this trend isn't reversed, nature may take her own steps, which may have severe consequences for mankind. In fact, she already has. Scientists divide the atmosphere into layers called the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and thermosphere. High in the stratosphere lays a 10-mile thick blanket of ozone gas. Ozone's a special oxygen molecule formed by the sun. Each ozone molecule consists of three oxygen atoms. Ozone is also formed near the ground by lightning. The purpose of the ozone layer is to filter ultraviolet light to keep excessive amounts of ultraviolet light from reaching us on the surface. Recently, scientists from several countries studied ozone at the South Pole. There, they discovered a massive ozone hole the size of the United States. The ozone loss, in part, is due to the release of chlorofluorocarbon gas into the atmosphere. Chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, have been manufactured for over 60 years CFCs are chlorine, fluorine, and carbon-based industrial chemicals with a wide variety of uses. For example, CFC uses include automotive refrigerant, known as Freon or R12, commercial refrigerant, outside the U.S., aerosol propellants, solvent for cleaning electronic components, and medical equipment sterilant. Now we're finding that CFCs are destroying our protective ozone layer. But how? Well, one way is by the discharge of automotive air conditioning systems into the atmosphere, which releases CFCs. Over time, winds lift CFCs to the ozone layer. Sunlight releases the chlorine in the CFC. Chlorine attacks ozone, taking one oxygen atom. This leaves a two-atom oxygen compound and a chlorine and oxygen compound. Soon, Another oxygen atom breaks up the chlorine and oxygen. The chlorine is free again to destroy more ozone. This chain reaction can continue for decades. Why the concern? Excess ultraviolet light has been identified as a contributor to skin cancer, cataracts, and damage to the human immune system. Excess ultraviolet light also reduces crop yields and harms marine life. The ozone hole discovery really got worldwide attention. In 1987, Montreal, Canada hosted a three-day forum which resulted in the Montreal Protocol. The goals of that protocol are to phase out CFCs by the year 2000 and replace R12 by 1998. As you may be aware, R12 use reductions and research into another refrigerant, R134A, are already underway. To you and me, the Montreal Protocol clearly demands effective air conditioning repairs and quick leak detection, and cleaning and reusing R12. That's right, recycling R12. The United States government signed and ratified the Montreal Protocol and made several tough laws. One law your parts department is already aware of is a significant new tax on Freon. With this in mind, let's look at the ACR3 system. The Air Conditioning Refrigerant Recovery and Recycling, or ACR3 system, Essential Tool J38100B, is more than a new piece of equipment. The ACR3 system represents a global effort to help reduce R12 discharge into the atmosphere. Tests show that the average vehicle has 30% of its AC charge when brought in for service. The ACR3 can capture this R12, eliminating its discharge. Then. In a separate process, the ACR3 cleans and dries the R12. The result is R12 that is equal to the Society of Automotive Engineers specification for reclaimed and recovered refrigerant. Another important fact is that you can use the system with your charging station and other AC equipment you already have.
Under the ACR3's cover, a maze of refrigerant hoses connect several components. Let's look at the recovery components first. The recovery face utilizes the control panel, a recovery compressor, an inlet connection, a heat exchanger and oil separator, a refillable storage tank, a weight platform, an accumulator pressurizing valve, and an oil drain valve. When the recovery compressor runs, R12 gas flows from the inlet to the heat exchanger oil separator. Refrigerant oil and moisture simply fall from the R12 gas and collect on the bottom. This is the initial cleaning step. The recovery compressor pumps the R12 gas back to the heat exchanger as a hot gas, which is about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat exchanger coil draws heat from the hot R12 gas, changing it to hot liquid. R12 liquid flows into the refillable storage tank, and that's the recovery phase. Now, let me show you the recycling phase. It starts at this side of the control panel and goes on to a magnetically coupled liquid pump, the storage tank, a filter dryer, past the moisture indicator, and back to the storage tank. The R12 must remain liquid during recycling since heat easily boils R12. A special pump moves the liquid R12 through the system. A powerful magnet spins the gear pump. See? No shaft. This eliminates heat transfer so that the R12 doesn't flash in the pump's gears. The pump draws liquid R12 from the refillable storage tank and into the filter dryer core. The filter dryer core traps all moisture and contaminants and separates oil from the liquid refrigerant. The pump recirculates refrigerant through the system. When the moisture indicator is green, the R12 is clean. Shut off the system. Recycling time is 30 minutes to 2 hours, depending on refrigerant quantity, moisture content, and condition of the filter dryer core. Now, let's look at usage. To set up the ACR3 system for its first use, you'll have to install a filter and a tank. To install the filter, remove the eight filter cap bolts and filter assembly. Discard the cardboard separator. Open the filter container and place a new gasket on the cap. Set the filter dryer core on the upper bracket. Place the lower bracket on the filter dryer core and install the tie rods. Insert the filter assembly into the filter shell. Install the eight filter cap bolts. In a star pattern, Torque the bolts. The new tank contains dry nitrogen. Slightly open the gas valve to bleed off pressure. Don't worry. Nitrogen is a harmless common gas. In fact, you're breathing it now. When the tank is empty, evacuate it with a vacuum pump for about 10 minutes. Set the tank on the platform. Attach the strap, but not so tight that it stops the platform from moving. Attach the blue hose to the liquid port and the yellow hose to the elbow on the tank. This hose is part of the air purge system that bleeds air from the tank. Attach the red hose to a vacuum pump. Run the vacuum pump for 10 minutes to evacuate moisture and air from the system. Switch off the pump, disconnect the red hose and attach it to the gas port on the tank. Open the gas valve. The system is ready to recover R12. Fit your current gauge set with the three new hoses supplied with the ACR3 system. As part of an SAE requirement, these hoses have a close-off feature to eliminate discharge. Close both gauge set valves. 
Attach the low side hose to the vehicle AC low side fitting at the accumulator. Attach the high side hose to the high side fitting near the compressor. Attach the gauge set center hose to the ACR3 inlet port. Start the engine and engage the AC compressor. Run the vehicle's AC system for about two minutes. This short operating time heats the R12. When the R12 is hot, the ACR3 system can pull more from the vehicle in less time. On cool or cold days, select the heat mode with the temperature on full hot to speed up the recovery process. Shut off the engine. Open both gauge set valves. Open both storage tank valves at the same time. Plug the ACR3 system into a standard 110 volt AC outlet. Turn on the main power switch. Push the compressor start switch. The compressor on light should illuminate. After about eight minutes, the recovery pressure switch should detect a vacuum of 17 inches of mercury and automatically shut off the compressor. The fan, however, continues to run to cool the recovery compressor. Observe the low side gauge. It should read 17 inches of mercury and stay at that reading for two minutes. If the reading rises above zero pounds per square inch of pressure, then R12 is still in the vehicle. In that case, push the compressor start switch and let the unit run through another cycle. Check the gauges again. If the reading is right, open the accumulator pressurizing valve momentarily and then close it. This pressurizes the heat exchanger oil separator. Then open the oil drain valve. The pressure forces the recovered oil out of the oil separator. When oil stops coming out, Close the oil drain valve. Measure the exact amount of oil in the catch bottle for later replacement of new oil into the vehicle's AC system. Do this after every recovery job. When the recovery tank is full, a switch in the weight platform shuts off the system and turns the tank full light on. Disconnect the system from the vehicle for recycling. When you're ready, plug the system into a 110 volt AC outlet. Be sure to open both valves on the refillable storage tank. Push the recycle start switch. The recycle on light indicates that the system is working. Now every 30 minutes, check the moisture indicator. If it is still yellow, let the system run for up to two hours. An automatic air purge system releases air from the storage tank during recycling, accompanied by an air exhaust noise. This is not a refrigerant leak. When the moisture indicator is green, the recycling phase is complete. Close both tank valves and then shut off the power. The R12 in this tank is ready for charging. To remove a full tank, close both valves, then disconnect the three hoses from the tank. Then remove the strap and set the tank aside. Place an empty tank on the platform and attach the strap. If the empty tank has already been used, it's not necessary to pull a vacuum on the ACR3 system. Reconnect the hoses. The system is now ready to recover more refrigerant and the recycled tank is ready to charge AC systems. Charging is the same, with one exception. Inside the tank, the tube extends to within an inch of the bottom of the tank. This design allows liquid R12 to be drawn from the bottom of the tank without turning it over. If the moisture indicator is yellow after two hours of recycling, the filter core may be saturated with moisture. To replace the filter dryer core, close the liquid valve on the tank. Make sure the gas valve is open. Remove the blue hose from the tank and attach it to the ACR3 inlet. To remove R12 from the system and into the storage tank, start the recovery compressor. After the unit shuts off, remove the eight filter cap bolts 
cap, and filter core assembly. Clean all the internal parts with a dry towel. Insert the new filter assembly into the filter shell. In a star pattern, torque the bolts. Next, remove the blue hose from the inlet and attach it to a vacuum pump. Run the vacuum pump for 10 minutes to remove air that entered the unit during the filter change. After evacuating, attach the blue hose back to the liquid port and open the liquid valve. The system is now ready to continue recycling. Because all R11 flushing procedures have been eliminated, always install a liquid line filter in the vehicle's air conditioning system whenever system failure requires recharging to help keep the system clean. Four air conditioning filter designs are available. The inline filter is a direct replacement for a portion of the liquid line on La Sabre and Park Avenue. Riviera and Riata utilize a filter that replaces the muffler assembly. The remaining car lines use two types of splice-in filters with and without an orifice. To install a liquid line filter in a Park Avenue, first recover the refrigerant from the system. Use two wrenches to open the liquid line connections. And then disconnect the other connection and remove the line from the vehicle. Note the arrow pointing to the evaporator and install the line in this direction. Lubricate the O-ring at each end and install both fittings hand tight. Torque the fittings. And when charging the system, be sure to leak test the two filter connections. Consult the service manual for installation procedures for the other types of inline filters. Add oil to the vehicle system after the recovery phase. Use two wrenches to open the system at the accumulator. Pour new 525 viscosity refrigerant oil equal to the recovered amount into the disconnected hose or line. Close the system and torque the fitting to specs. Evacuate and charge the system. Charging air conditioning systems with recycled refrigerant is identical to previous service manual procedures. Just remember that you don't have to invert the tank. Protecting our wildlife and the environment for our children while producing the products we need and want is no small task. But recycling R12 is part of the answer for everyone's future. The Great American Road belongs to viewers.